I wanted to do a demonstration of a mechanism ball connection and so I went online and made two great discoveries. First off, there is this website b2b.partcommunity.com where you can download 3D CAD models and for a ball connection I found this one by this company called RK Rose Krieger and let me show you their website over here. Here's the ball connection and from here I was able to get a fully detailed featured model that I could use in my demonstration. So again, I always like to give shouts out to companies that put their CAD models online for users. So thank you very much, RK Rose Krieger. Here I am in Creole Parametric and I've downloaded and unzipped their assembly. The only thing I've done to it is I've changed the colors of some of the components and applied transparency to the big component on the outside and also hidden a bunch of the datums just to make it viewable. But other than that, this is the CAD assembly as they have provided. And again, you can see that it is full of Creole parametric features in here when you download it. So just, just great work. All right. So I want to have a ball connection. I want this blue component to be able to rotate around inside of that socket. And to do a ball connection, it is essentially a point to point connection. So I'm going to turn on the display of my datum points. These parts don't have the necessary datum points. So I'm going to create them. Let's start off with this component. So I will click on it and then choose open. And now I'm going to click on the datum point tool and I can select the spherical surface. And right now it's set to on. If I go to the dialog box, I can click on on and change it to a value of center. And uh, let's go ahead and change the name. Let's call this center because that's what we're going to use for our uh, ball connection. And all right, so that's great. Let me close this. And now for defining the point in the assembly, I'm going to use this component over here. So I will click on it and then choose open. And let me turn on the display of my axes and planes. And so for locating the point, is it the, is that the center of either this one or this one? I'm not sure which one, but I'm going to create points at the center of both just to be safe. And to do that, I will create a sketch and I'm going to sketch on this datum plane over here. And let's choose, okay, that datum plane to face top. That's good. Let's click the flip to get the arrow pointed the way that I want. Now I will click the sketch button to go into sketch mode and let's go to our sketch view. Let's clip the model. And if I realize that, oh, I'm looking upside down from the way that I want, you can go to sketch setup and let's change this to face top. That's good. And now for using these spherical surfaces as references, I will go to my references button and I could, you might be able to pick them. If you're not able to pick them, you could use the use cross section and then pick the surface. Two different ways of getting the references that you need. And when I do that, I can see that we have little references there. So I'm going to create regular sketcher points at those locations. And let's also go to our references. I'm going to add in the center axis in here. And there aren't a couple of vertical center lines. Just get references to figure out where the centers of those spheres are on the main rotation axis. And that's where I'm going to drop in the datum points. I did another video that explained the difference between these datums over here and the ones in the sketching group. The sketching group creates entities that exist only in the sketch. The ones in the datum group will actually create features in the model. And let's hit the check mark. And so now when I deselect in here, let's go to the view tab and I'm going to turn off my datum turn on my datum point tags as well. Let me go to my layers and turn on the display of sketches just so you can see those points. And I don't need any of the other 
datums besides points and axes. Let's turn off the display of planes and let's close this. And now I'm back into my main assembly to define the mechanism connection. It'll be easier for you to see if I turn off the display of all the other components except these main ones that I am interested in. And if you take a look right now, the way that the geometry came in, there's actually interference between the ball component and the socket that it sits in. So it's not actually assembled in the right place to begin with. And so here we have the component. I'm going to click on it and then use edit definition from the mini toolbar. And right now it's using a fixed constraint. So let's go to the placement tab, right click on the fixed constraint and choose delete. And instead of using our regular constraints like distance and parallel and coincident and so on, I'm going to go to the drop down list and choose the mechanism connection that I want. And again, I want a ball connection. And with a ball connection, it's point alignment. So you're going to pick a point from the component and a point from the assembly. You notice that it adjusted the location appropriately. And you can also define the range of motion. And for the range of motion, you're going to define a cone by selecting a couple of axes. An axis down the center of the component that we're assembling and then an axis from the assembly. And here you see the cone. And right now it's got 180 degrees of motion that is possible. I'm gonna guess and say, hey, maybe I only want 40 degrees. And then when we hit the check mark, I can click on the model tab and go to the drag components and pick on this component and it's only allowed to rotate within plus or minus 40 degrees in all the different locations. And taking a look at that 40 degrees when I was dragging it. Let's go to drag again. Looks like I'm getting some interference when I do that. So I can edit definition of the components. Go back to the placement tab. Click on the cone axis. Maybe the cone opening angle should be a little smaller like 35 degrees. You can also use the current position to type in the value here and see what it ends up being. And I'm just eyeballing it in this case. And 35, even that looks like it might be a smidgen too much. So maybe I want to try 34. Yeah, that looks good. You know, keep it safe. Let's make 34 the cone opening angle and hit the check mark. And in that way, now I have my connection in here for the ball and socket. And again, you can click on the drag and drag it through its range of motion. Be aware that with the ball connection, if I go to the applications and then mechanism menu, you're not able to create a motor on this connection. So it would be resulting from the motion of other components in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.